Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let's talk about Luis Colazzo's second round KO victory over favorite Victor Ortiz. Many of you left comments in the comment section to earlier videos and some of you even sent me personal emails asking me for my prediction on this fight. I didn't have one. This fight was a mystery to me. The more I looked at it, the more uneasy I was about a host of things. I typically don't take fighters coming off of knockout losses where the fighter has lost consciousness. I also don't take fighters coming off of fights where they've suffered the kind of injury that might actually affect them mentally in the ring their next time out. Now Victor Ortiz fought Jose Cito Lopez in his last fight before this one. Uh, in that fight he broke his jaw. He didn't lose consciousness but he broke his jaw and walked away from the fight uh, officially losing by TKO, right? Well, let me just say that um, a broken jaw is the kind of thing that's going to have a fighter questioning every punch that lands on that jaw afterwards, right? I don't care who the fighter is, whether it's Victor Ortiz or Ali, who got his jaw broken by Ken Norton. When that guy is fighting in their next fight, I'm going to be a little bit hesitant, right? I know Victor Ortiz is a guy who gets in brawls, right? Has been hit hard in some fights. The Marcos Maidana fight, the Andre Berto fight, the Jose Cito Lopez fight. A fighter like that, with any apprehension whatsoever about being hit in the jaw, might not be the same fighter. So I was hesitant, even though that Jose Cito Lopez fight was a long time ago, right? Another cause for concern in betting on this fight was the fact that Victor Ortiz didn't fight at all in 2013. That Jose Cito Lopez fight was so long ago that Ortiz actually, excuse me, that Lopez fought two big payday fight since that fight. He fought Saul Alvarez. He fought Marcus Maidana. He even fought a third fight against Mike Arnudis. Right? So understand, while Lopez stayed busy fighting three fights, Ortiz was out of the ring, in part by medical necessity. Because, of course, you get a broken jaw, you have to have that bone heal. You have to have an implant put in the jaw. You have to build back up the confidence in sparring. So I didn't like those two things. The other factor was the fact that this fight was in Brooklyn. Luis Galasso is from New York City. Right? I believe Ortiz going into the fight was the faster, fresher harder hitting fighter but he was going to be fighting his comeback fight right first fight since 2012 in Colazzo's backyard the other problem too is the fact that Colazzo is a technician he's not the most explosive puncher right he's not the best athlete what he is, is a guy with spectacular skills. He's very advanced defensively. He's the kind of guy who can counter you and make you look bad. His losses, losses to people like Ricky Hatton, Andre Berto, were debatable. Right? Close fights. 
He won several rounds. He clearly looked to me to be not the better athlete, but more skilled than Andre Berto. Right now, let's talk about the second round of this fight. It's interesting. What I want you to consider is the fact that Ortiz might not be a real southpaw. Right? That'll jump out at you as you watch the tape. He fights out of a southpaw stance. But understand, just like switch hitters in baseball, just like you have some guys in baseball who will bat left-handed but throw right-handed, the way Ortiz fights, and I don't know how Ortiz throws or what have you, but the way he fights indicates to me that he might be a righty fighting out of a southpaw stance. Now that's significant here because he's facing a true southpaw in Luis Colazo. So, the beginning of the second round. First round's close. The first round's a feeling out round. It's high level. Both guys figure out early on that the other guy's hard to hit in the head. And so both guys are trying to open up on the other guy's body. They're trying to figure out the defense. Right? Now understand, in my opinion, they fight different styles. Right? You talk to 10 people, they'll tell you 10 opinions. Here's mine. I believe they fight different styles. Ortiz is a kind of explosive type puncher. He's waiting for big moments. Right? He's impatient. He's just hoping to see the door half open, then he's going to try to break through it. Right? He's looking to hit home runs. Luis Colazo, by contrast, is a doubles hitter. In other words, he's taking whatever you give him. He sees an opening, he comes in with a counter, he's the better counter puncher. Second round opens. Both guys are in southpaw stances. You'll notice that Luis Colazo lands a very good right hook. Keep in mind, since he's a southpaw, that's the punch up front. He lands a very good right hook. More importantly, you'll notice that he throws several right hooks. Right? You'll also notice that he can go from 0 to 60 with it. In other words, he's not feeling around and stuff. He already has the distance figured out on how to land his right hook. Paulie Malinaji is doing the fight. Malinaji calls it a check right hook. You may recall Mayweather's check left hook against Ricky Hatton. Right? A check right hook means that Ortiz, the opponent, is jumping in. And you need to check him. You need to slow him down by hitting him with something as he jumps in. That's the pattern of the fight. Right? Ortiz is measuring punches. You know at the beginning of the second round that he has that lead right hook measured. He knows how to land it on Ortiz. You also know that Ortiz is jumping in a little bit recklessly where as he jumps in, he's open for that right hook. Well, here's where it gets interesting. Because Ortiz might be orthodox, fighting out of a southpaw stance, you'll notice that Ortiz is relying on his left hand more than a true southpaw would. So let's fast forward to the end of the second round, the end of the fight. You're going to notice that Ortiz, with about 20 seconds left in the round, lands a left hand. Right? He has it timed where he lands a left hand. You can tell that that's what he really wants to land. Right? He wants to land a heavy left hand. 
So then, of course, we get to the last 10 seconds of the round. Let me just say, boxing is a sport of angles and split-second decisions. It might surprise some people hearing about this fight today who know that Colazzo won the fight by KO at the end of the second round. To hear me here online say that Victor Ortiz gets there first. Ortiz is facing Colazzo because he wants to throw lefts right as his lead punch Ortiz tries to throw a left hand to hit Luis Colazzo right now Colazzo a vet or Ortiz gets off the punch first now Colazzo a vet has to make a quick decision I'm here to tell you that if Ortiz, excuse me, if Colazzo had made the wrong decision, if he had leaned back, I'd be here talking about Victor Ortiz winning this fight by second round knockout. Instead, Colazzo, a vet, smothers the punch. He takes a step in. The punch doesn't hit him on the jaw. The punch hits him here because he smothered the punch, right? He catches Ortiz's left hand with his body. And, of course, Ortiz, one of the holes in this game, is Ortiz throws the punch. He has nothing to block what comes back. This hand's not here. Right? He's not the kind of guy who throws the punch. He's not Jorge Arce, who would have his head over here. Right? There, there, there are different ways to make sure you don't get hit when you're exposed after throwing a power punch. Right? One way is to have a glove up here. Bernard Hopkins. I've seen him do it many times. Floyd Mayweather. Right? They'll throw a punch. They have a glove up. Another is to literally, when you throw punches, have your head way over here. Jorge Arce. Orlando Salido. Right? So this way I'm throwing a haymaker, but I'm not there to get hit. Victor Ortiz throws the left hand. Now think about it. This is an all-in play. Otherwise, he would throw... The right hand, right? Soften up Colazzo. He does it. He throws the left hand. Colazzo steps forward, right? It's a vet move. He steps forward. He's crowding an explosive fighter. The punch hits him here. Colazzo comes back with the right hook. That ends the fight. Literally. Just like that, right? This fight comes down to the fact that Colazzo was able to time that right hook and the fact that Victor Ortiz is busy trying to throw left hands and isn't set up to throw lead right hooks. Right? So, I want you to watch the end of the fight and realize Ortiz throws the punch first. It gets smothered. He leaves himself wide open for the counter. Colazzo delivers the counter. It's a nice, short, right hook. After he lands that punch, Ortiz spins away. This fight's over. Colazzo steps over there, tries to throw more punches. I don't believe they land. I believe Ortiz is so dazed and confused, he hits the canvas where he's counted out. Right? So, my takeaway from the fight. 
Luis Colazo is an excellent counter puncher. His defense is nice. You'll notice a lot of upper body movement before the knockout. You'll notice that Colazo is very patient. You'll notice that Colazo measures things before he goes all in. With regard to Victor Ortiz, Ortiz remains one of the best athletes in boxing. He's just not as skilled as someone like Colazo is defensively. In other words, when Ortiz goes for broke with the left hand, right, the last punch he throws in the fight, he leaves himself completely open. He's unprepared for what comes back. When he gets hit, he gets hurt. Right? I thought it was an interesting ending. If Ortiz wants to continue his career, he certainly can do that. Were I Ortiz's trainer, I would try to work with him on finding out ways to throw big punches while keeping your defense intact. Because while Ortiz is an excellent offensive fighter, he's not that good defensively especially against southpaws who can throw short lead right hooks and short right counters, right? Ortiz unprepared for that part of Colazzo's game. Give Colazzo credit on having the veteran savvy and the patience and confidence to actually step to Ortiz instead of stepping away from him. No doubt, as Ortiz was on the way up, most fighters, seeing a heavy-handed guy throwing punches, might try to stay away from him, which would have been exactly the wrong move against Victor Ortiz yesterday. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.